All right, let's get into this conversation now. Captain Keshi Mabunda's bravery and dedication to serve his country with distinction has paid off. The top cop, who is famously known for cracking the insurance claim fraud case involving Rosemary Ndlovu, was rewarded with a police minister's special award and promoted for his good work. Well, Captain Mabunda also leading an investigation in another high-profile case which involves, again, insurance fraud. This time around, a woman linked to the murder of her cousin and biological son in the Northwest Province. Well, let's get to know the man. Captain Keshimabunda joins me in studio this afternoon. Good evening to you, Captain. Good evening, Colin. How are you? And good evening to you viewers as well. It's good to have you here. <laughs> it's good to have you here, Captain. Yeah. Let's begin the conversation with um, why you chose to become a police officer. I'm aware that initially you wanted to become a lawyer, but the understanding is that law school was just too expensive. Do you believe that becoming a police officer was a fair compromise? Mm, at first, well, it was just a, a job. Yeah. Because I had tried to look for a job, but... Um, couldn't get it up until I went to, uh, to be a police officer. Mm. I wanted to pursue my career to be a, a lawyer. Mm. But I, I became more interested when I on the, um, on the field. Yeah. More especially when I, I became a detective. Mm. Believe me, I, I only uh, wore in for a year. A year ago? Uh, only a year. One year. Oh. So I became from there. I was uh, transferred to be a detective. Wow. Yes. So you will explain that to us, because you wearing the uniform versus not wearing it, it means that uh, there, there was always something special about you. But let's go logically through your story. Your journey in the police service, it started back in 2005, and you gravitated towards becoming a detective. Is that perhaps the reason why you don't normally wear a police uniform? No, it's, uh, I, I was recruited in 2004. Ah. Then I went to training, from training, back to the police station where I was posted at. Then I trained, after completing my training, I worked at the client service center. Mm. I think plus or minus uh, six months. Then um, I was recruited to be a detective. I was identified by another. Uh, captain, yeah, that they want me to become a detective. Why did they choose you for detective work? What qualities did you show? I didn't. I don't know what what they saw in me. <laughs> uh, but you remember when you were in the um, in the police, they said like clients said that you obtain statements. Hmm. Maybe maybe you saw something as he was reading the docket. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you could write a, a police docket very well. Proper statement. A proper statement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the case that I think you have become very famous for. Nomia Rosemary Ndlov. When your story is remembered, people are going to say, ah, that's the police officer yes. who took away this person from the community of South Africa because she was obviously a dangerous criminal and placed her behind bars for many years. She is regarded one of the most dangerous female serial killers of our time. Take us back to what led you to stumble upon this case. Um, I became a I was, trans I was working in the provincial office mm -hmm. and I was transferred to Old Transporting Police Station. Yeah. So one day, Rosemary came to the police station uh, that to report his um, living partner, Morris Mabasa, right. that, that it is missing. She's a police officer, she's a police, police woman, she knows what is needed if ever you have to report a missing person. Right. Like you have to come to the uh, particulars. Of the death of the missing person, no. even the photo. But she didn't brought them. All we find that uh, she knew what happened to Maurice. Mm. 
because mm. was found dead at, 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 at a kilometer from the police station mm. at Old Friends Fontaine. So if the time she came to the police station to report him, she knew that the police were there. She passed that scene and reported it. But before she could even finish, uh, police came and informed her, no, we will find a, a black man lying, lying there. Mm. So fortunately, uh, the, uh, Maurice was well known, and she had a friend at the police station. Then they could inform, they informed her that, no, what, this is uh, your husband who was so and then she started to act, she fainted, taken to hospital. Fine, the case was opened. Right. Come the following day, uh, Rosemary come to the police station. Now the doctor is with the I.O. But when she come to the police station, she's having this touch, a bunch of policies. Right. So for my colleague to sign. This is a stack of documents. A stack of documents. Document. Right. So I became sub uh, interested. In so after I signed my colleague, I went to his office. Chief, what are you, what are you signing? He said, I'm, you see, just, just policies. Policies, yes. But how many did you sign? No, there, there are many. I said, Chief, no, no, no. Something doesn't end up here. Yeah? Please call her, bring her back to the police station. Make copies of all those uh, insurance policies. Tell her that you want to file it for, for, for the administration. Yeah. Called her back, she came, he did as I requested. As she went out, I went to the man, I'm taking this bucket, I'll do it myself. <laughs> because I found that this is not normal, you can't have such uh, insurances. Then I so all out. of these documents were being signed off on, in one day? In one day, yes. <laughs> then I said, no, from today I'm going to do this case myself. There is something, I want to check something. Yeah. And indeed, um, I, t I took a dog in that docket, and I singled out one policeman from client 10. Mm. I phoned client 10 to investigate. I said, Chief, I'm giving this ID number. Check for me what is happening with this person. Yeah. And he learned that, no, 2012, she claimed for the policy. Funny enough, the docket was in the same police station, same I.O., but it was not that way, due to low weight load. Mm. Then, uh, then she came again in 2013, where she killed her, her sister. It was at another police station. Mm. So I said, okay, no, I mean, please, red flag your ID. Don't pay. Let's, let us do investigation. That time she already got plus or minus 400,000 for this, uh, some policies. Right. Yeah, so they red flag the ID. Then she couldn't get access to the bigger chunk of the money. Right. So I tried to investigate. He checked, I could see now there's a problem here. Then the problem came where by um, one of the companies, she phoned them, uh, why don't you pay me my money? And that person said, no, my brother said you mustn't pay you. <laughs> He's still investigating. Ooh. Then she came to the police station, furious, to my office. And she came looking for you. Because Wait, now she yeah. had become aware that it's you are yeah, investigating. I, that's correct. Then she... Came, no, she's a giant. She's very tall. Then she entered, my bond, how are you good? Fine. What? Why do you tell people not to pay me my money? I said, oh, who's that person? Give me the phone number. She gave me the phone. I took the phone at the desk. I phoned that person. I said, guys, I never said to you, you mustn't pay Rosemary. Please, it's her money. Pay her. Don't involve me in your, in your things. I'm only doing a criminal case myself. Whatever she, she, she have, is due for her, please pay her. Then she was happy. She went out. Right. I followed her to make sure that she's out of the police station. I closed the door when I, as I, I left my, my office so that no one has come and touched that phone that I used. As she's out of the police station, I made it redial. You dialed the same the person? The same called. number. Right. Because I couldn't write it down. I just dialed it to her as she was giving, giving it to me. Then I, <laughs> I phoned that person, you know what, call Rosemary now. Tell her that it was not my bond, that it was an error. So my bond is not involved in whatever we're doing here in our company. So after we're done, I'm going to pay you back your money. So immediately they informed her, she, they called me back and 
we talked. They said, no, we didn't inform her. She said, it's fine. Mm. Then I changed that docket not to be on my name. And bogey to another um, white cape thing. I was only to draw a mind away out from me. So all of this effort is to try and make sure that she does not know that she is under official investigation and more importantly that you, the person who's investigating her, she must not know that you are on her tail. That's correct. I didn't want her to know because she knew that I already started something. Right. So uh, by taking her to this person, not waiting at the same police station, she was afraid. She never even approached that uh, captain. So let's, let's go according to, let, let's try and fast forward then. When she was convicted, she was convicted of orchestrating the murders of the man she supposedly loved. That's the man you, Maurice. Who you spoke about earlier, yeah, Maurice, Mas, yes. Maurice Mabasa, and along with five other relatives in total, Captain, how much do you think she was able to get for killing her relatives? In total, uh, because um, if I can start on 2012, mm. she got and did 1,000 when she killed her cousin, whom she, she insured as a husband. Yeah. So she, it was Maurice, with this Madala home. The sister, she got 780,000, mm. Audrey, for Maurice where I got involved. She already pocketed 400,000 when I became involved with the case. Right. So the rest, I, she was going to get a lot of money because there was life policies. She was going to be more richer hmm. on that, uh, in Maurice. So the problem came away by, uh, there is this uh, organization, it's called the Insurance Crime Bureau. So some companies were not affiliated with the insurance company, you know? so she could even get money from them because even if they reflect the, the, the ID, but they couldn't see because they are not uh, uh, affiliated with the insurance company. You know? uh -huh. But there's open eye to, uh, to, to them. Right. Now most companies are in one umbrella now. Very interesting case indeed. Captain, when you had the opportunity, this is now when it's out in the open, She's aware that you are investigating him. When you had that opportunity to sit in front of her, and I think this is possibly the time where she is now in police cells, and you were able to sit her down and ask, why did you do this? Did, did you ever get any expression of remorse from her? I'd, I'd love to hear what her story was to you. It was on the 11th of March, 2018. Mm. And the first time I met uh, Rosemary, she was arrested in Bush Park Ridge, occasion to, to kill her sister. So I went to the police station, book her out from the cells. We sat down in the office like this, mm. have my docket say. Then I greeted her and I said to her, the docket was never with Captain Joe, it was with me. The reason, why I took, the reason why I took it to him is because I knew that you going to give me trouble. As you started that time when I, blo I, blo I blocked the payouts. Then I started case, the case of 2012. Because I had the whole information. I investigated properly, thoroughly. Three years. So what she did, she just cried. She was crying. And so earlier you, you <laughs> indicated that uh, she... She was quite a, a good actor, and so yes. do, you do you believe that those were genuine tears or crocodile tears? No, those were cro crocodile tears, I could see. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I had facts. Hmm. I, I, I took time to, to, to investigate, hmm. because I wanted to do things properly, so that when I effect an arrest, I have everything. Right. I must no loophole here. So when, as I was alluding it to her that no, you have done this, you have done this. She could see that I've done my homework of all the cases. Yeah. Then she, she said, no, I didn't know what she, she got. She said, they told me that they were going to arrest me. But my problem, the problem was because I was not having a case. So she was, wherever she was, she was getting the information. She didn't, she was telling them, but this guy is not investigating me. So I don't know where she went to or what, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
the fact that she was a police officer, a fellow police officer, that obviously made your job a little bit harder than any normal case. Explain to us the, the lens you had to go through to try and hide information from her. The dockets uh, clearly were not based at the police station. Right. There was a company where uh, the dockets were seated there. So the ICB, because they're the one who helped me a lot. Mm. They, so I just got the information, go and file it there, even scan it. Because she knew that, okay, uh, my woman, of our offices, so she was able to get it if she wanted to. Mm. Even the people who were aware about the investigation were very few. It was the, the captain and another general and the, and the courts. The reason the court knows, you have to know because I have to, as I had to apply for section 205. Uh -huh. So <laughs> they have to read. So they knew, only the senior prosecutor there was away. Yeah. So a section 205, just so we don't lose the viewers, a section 205 is what? Is, a, is, a, is that an arrest warrant? No, a section 205 is whereby you request a company or anyone to for supply information. For, for information. I see. Yes. Okay. And it so happened, therefore, Captain, that she's arrested, convicted. I think right now she's serving six life terms. We're going to return to Nomi and Lobo a little later because yeah, yeah. at the moment you are now seized with another case that has a very striking resemblance to that of Rosemary Ndlovu. The person who is being investigated here is Agnes Sechomotsi Setwanto. She is another person accused of taking out insurance on her relatives and once she is able to do that, she would poison, allegedly poison her victims in order for her to get these monies out. Let's talk about the amount of monies involved in this particular case. How much are we talking? Mm. Though it's the case still is Yeah. But at the time I arrested her, she was supposed to get um, seven, seven million because I was with, with the company on, as I checked the document, just seven million rent. Yes. And the people that she is alleged to have killed and obviously therefore qualifying for this seven million, my understanding is that it's two people thus far. Who are these people? Are you able to tell us? Um, as I didn't get a manual from my age. <laughs> The case is still subject, subject care. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. A and that's the problem here, Captain, because yeah. if the case is still in court, you possibly may get into trouble yeah. for talking about it. But um. it's fine. We're going to skirt around that matter. Yeah. And so let's then circle back and talk about the, the reputation of the South African Police Service that sometimes is not so good. But you're one of the few examples that is able to sit in front of us and we're able to talk about a good story that has been done by a South African police officer. The, the late High Court Judge, Ramarumo Wunama, yeah. he paid you a special compliment when convicting Rosemary Ndlovu. Yes. And his words were, you presented a solid case and had it not been for your tenacity I want to use his words directly the files I quote now the files would have been in the police station gathering dust how did you feel when a judge said those words to a police officer I kind of beat me like I didn't expect it yeah. But uh, to be complimented by a judge, uh, it's something else. Yeah. You know, is we as police, we have to, we must learn to investigate in order to arrest, yeah. not to arrest then investigate. Remember, there's constitution. Yeah. If you don't, if your story is not picked correctly, and now they postpone the case to, they'll throw the case out of court because mm -hmm. you want to, you were quick to arrest. 
Yeah. So I just want to bear with the public that no, if the process men said no, we are still investigating. Don't rush them. <laughs> Please, don't rush us <laughs> to, to arrest the person. We yeah. must get evidence. I like those words that you said earlier. So you must investigate in order to arrest in order to arrest yes. don't arrest in order to, to investigate and investigate later that's correct in the rosemary Ndlovu case you went to as you've explained you went to the extent of locking up the the case docket you said that it was locked up in a separate area away from the police station many people may not know the impact of losing a case docket, what that does to a case. Just explain that to us as an investigating officer with experience. When you lose that case docket, and many times we have reported in the media that a case has been lost, or rather a file has been lost, therefore this case may or may not survive. What's the impact? The impact is that uh, if the, that case is stolen, the person will go through the, the case docket, he will know the witnesses. So he will go and, he or she will go and kill those people or try to eliminate them. So it is very much important to, so that we, we mustn't lose, we must make sure we, we, we safeguard our, our, our case dockets, yeah. more especially sensitive ones. I propose, like that one I was dealing with the police officer, we knew the system. Mm -hmm. So I have to be smart. And indeed, I was smart enough to, to uh, because she couldn't get anything. If you're just joining us, a very good evening to you. You find us right in the middle of a conversation with the decorated police captain, Keshi Mabunda, and his bravery, dedication in service of his country, paying off when he was able to send away for many years a fellow police officer who had turned into a criminal. Captain? Let's come back to the awards that you <laughs> recently received. <laughs> I, love the, yeah. I love the chuckle. You were recently named South Africa's number one national detective. You've also been awarded uh, for being the Forensic Services Employee of the Year. Let's just talk about those two awards. What do they mean to you? I, I, um, to reach that stage, yeah, because uh, I was still working in the Gauteng province, I have to beat Ecorolin. I was working in the Ecorolin mm. cluster, so it means I was number one at Ecorolin, 2023. Then I went to now Gauteng province, I had nomination. I became number one. Then we have to go to the third one, the, the last one was national. Mm. Then I became number one as well. So it was all those three stages. Wow. That's, that was 2023. And so when did you become captain? Is it, was it in the same awards ceremony where you were named captain? No, I was not expecting that. Mm. Uh, this year, uh, nomination, I was not part. I didn't even uh, uh, <laughs> put my name there mm. so that I can be selected. So I was just surprised when I was phoned by human resources that I must be at the, at the ceremony. Awards. Where, really? Yes. So, so someone or a fellow police officer may have nominated your name, is it? I don't know how they did, but uh, they said I must be available. I didn't know what's happening. Just right. be there on black tie. <laughs> <laughs> All you knew was that it's a black tie. Yeah, you must be there on black, uh, on black uh, attire black tie. So I went there. I didn't know that I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a promotion. Right. It came as a surprise. Wow. That's why I was so very much happy <laughs> as to when that happened. On the back of these awards, Captain, the country at the moment, we have a string, in fact thousands of new recruits. I believe the police minister says, including the president, says 10,000 recruits are going to be uh, brought into the South African police service. Yes. What's your advice to them? on what it takes to be a good police officer, but also remain grounded at the same time. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, okay, how can I put it? You know, uh, 
good mentorship yeah. is what made a, a new police recruit to be better. Yeah. So I was surrounded by good people, good detectives, who were guiding me. So it, uh, it's very sad to find that, you know, if I'm police are being arrested and so forth because of corruption. Yeah. So it's my plea that stay away from corruption, work hard. If ever you investigate naked, do as if you are investigating a case of your sister or your, your relative. Yeah. Just to help that particular person. If you can keep that person smiling, even if it's not a relative, that's good. Mm. And don't work for reward. Don't say because my brother is a captain today, you'll get no, no, no. Work as normal. Yeah. Because even myself, I didn't do. I got this uh, being detective of the year in forensic 2023. But 2024 came as a surprise when I was promoted. Mm. Without even applying. Because <laughs> part of, as I was doing this research, Captain, in preparation for this interview, you were quoted, I think it was in the U magazine, as saying that the Rosemary case, uh, Rosemary Njovo case, was one of the few cases that you had long been working on. In fact, there are bigger cases that you worked on. So you only shooting to fame now is part and parcel of this hard work you're talking about. That's correct, because in 2010, I was the best detective in Ivory Park Police Station with the highest court sentence. Wow. So you, you, I had cases. There's a lot of people who might send to prison. Mm. But it, it, this one, because it was a police officer, yeah. that's why I mind mean, uh, was so famous. And it also gained mm. prominence in yeah. the media. That's correct. Yeah. So let's then conclude the conversation and talk about the threats that come with the kind of work that you do. Because they did come. When you were investigating Rosemary Ndlovu, there were threats not only to your life, but you'll tell us now, some of your relatives were also threatened. How did you handle those? I have to change the lifestyle. Uh, but you don't, I, I, I remember I didn't even tell my family that I'm under threat. Mm. But I was so protective. For instance, when my son goes to school, I took him out from transport, and I was transporting him myself. Because he's the, one of the people that was said, If ever you cannot get rid of my bond, I will go to his son. We know where his, where his son is schooling. So that, that was a threat. That, that was a threat. We know where your son goes to school. Go to school. And we are going to take him. Take him and bury him alive. Just dig, a, dig a hole and bury him alive. So from there, I, that was the time I moved Rosemary from a Johannesburg prison to Hoshmanpur and beef up security. Around yourself? Around uh, uh, myself and for her to be searched, to be searched, to be searched each, each and every day. Because mm. uh, there's problem phones in prison. So Exactly that. Yeah. There are phones yeah. that prisoners gain access to. And that's illegal, is it not? That is, is it illegal? No, they're not supposed to have phones in prison. So they could be able to communicate with the outside world and do whatever. So I could see that, no, this, my life won't, is, it will be more in danger if she's still in, in that place. Because mm. we got a lot of phones from her yeah. prior to taking her to Hoshimampur. So there were instances where she would call you police officers that are investigating her directly, is it? No, she never called me, but she was able to communicate with other people who were supposed to come and eliminate me. Wow. Yes. And it is those people that informed you? That one of the persons is, 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 is still is still in witness protection now. He did inform me. Then I said, no, don't worry. I will, from now on, I'll put it to witness protection. Even today, he's still in witness protection. Yeah. Then, and, and he came and testified, and just good. At some point, you were even faced with a prospect of being 200,000 rands richer. Is that the amount <laughs> yeah. she offered you? Yes, I was promised that, that, that big amount. But I said to her, you know what, just get yourself a very good lawyer to take you out. And when she only wanted to get bail. I said, no, I'll never. I, no, I, for two years, doing bail for Rosemary. For, for two years, you yeah. were blocking her bail application. That's correct. Totally. Because your fear was that if she gets out, a lot of people, including yourself, may be in danger. That's correct. I, I, I saw it. saw it coming. Even the, those threats, I said, there's no way I'll leave this case. Who's going to do it? I have to finish this case. 
True. And I soldier on and finish it. So, as we conclude this conversation, <laughs> what does South Africa's number one police <laughs> officer do to relax? What do you do when you're not at work? Yeah. Of course, it's not <laughs> coming to South Africa cannot be part of it. You must yeah. tell us what it is that you do to distress. No, I... I like to stay with my, 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 my family, my cousins, yeah. and I like fishing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a dam next to my place. I, just, I go fish. <laughs> That's where I'm, uh, you know, patients come from fishing. I mean, yes. when you put a rod there, you don't know when, when the fish is going to catch. So, teaches go, patience. Yeah, teaches me patience. Mm -hmm. So, even there, when I investigate, if I come to you today, I said, no, I want a statement, so you give me a statement. He said, no, I won't back off. Yeah. I'll just relax, leave you. I'll come and day another after two months. But this will help it. Just try to convince you. Yeah. Yeah. So, because that's how you <laughs> actually were able to convince a, a certain lady. Yes. Two of to them. go and testify against uh, uh, Rosemary. Rose Mary. And they were the best witnesses. You know, it took, it took me two years to obtain their statement. Mm. One of them even had their husband tell you that she's not going to testify. Yes, I have to steal her. So you have to, to convince her to go to court and I must without him knowing? I must inform the court. You know what? Uh, this one must testify quickly. I want to take her back before that's been knock off truth. And to, 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 to end that, uh, 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 can I call it? to end that uh, trust, mm. I told her, no, whatever you want the police station, if you want to say, if I don't want, I'll come and do it in your house. Just take this my stamps. Certify the, what I've done, yes, I'll do it. Went to her house just to get a trust. Then she trusted me, then she gave me a statement. Wow. Yeah. And Even now were, we are communicating. And those were people that helped put away Rosemary and Lowe's. That's correct. She was the best witness. Yeah. Captain, um, I want to thank you very much for your time and massive congratulations Thanks, on brother. being the best detective, best forensic services employee of the year and today we're able to call you captain yeah, uh, from uh, sergeant uh, to captain uh, uh, sometimes i forget uh, i'm a captain <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so i'm not going to let you go without without giving us this important advice what do you say to police officers who come across people in suits and they obviously have gotten in, into trouble with the law. And here is a person saying, <clears throat> I'll give you a sweetener. Take this money and just look away. What's your advice? Because I think today we are faced with uh, police officers who get tempted. Yeah, Brian develops the problem. Because uh, mm. once you, are, you, you accept that Brian develop, it means that it means that you're going to divert whatever mm -hmm. you're supposed to do. To get, because once you, I take police money today, in order to make a case disappear or drag the investigation, I won't go forward with the investigation. Yeah. So we must refrain from corruption. So that let, let's serve the, the, the public with diligence. Captain, yeah. on those words, let me thank you very much. For Thanks, your time. Let me ask you to just <laughs> remain on the chair there, while I link to uh, another of our stories. But uh, that was a uh, captain. Keshe Mabunda, one of the best that the country has to offer.